All right, Sam Tober, Sound of Joy Music Services, and we are coming to the close of our Chord Builder series. As you can see, we've given you all of the charts which are available on, uh, you can actually Google these charts and you can pull them in for yourself. I believe there was a question asked in one of my videos, how can they get a copy of the charts that I show? Well, I get them from just doing searches on the internet. And if you search for Chord uh, patterns or chord names of chords, either major, minor, uh, which is what I search for, or chords in general, you will be able to see these actual much clearer images than I'm, I'm able to show here, but give you uh, your own way of creating your own personal reference guide. I wanted you to be able to see here on the image how all of these chords are held up by the major and the minor chords. They hold the key to all the other chords you hear, from the minor to the diminished to the C7, major 7s to the C7s, when the key of C, to the minor 6, 7th um, chords, right? These chords that you hear in all of your traditional gospel songs. So when you hear in the key of C, this walk up. off of scales major minor again I don't cover all of the uh, the different scales but there is a uh, a technique where if you do the C major scale and then you play the next note next to it I believe that is the Lydia Dulcian scale I don't have all my terms in front of me but each time you change a note and you play that scale you are playing all of the uh, theory scales, G, right? Playing them in the way that they are placed. Uh, B. So I've covered all of those scales just from playing the each note in succession in the same pattern or the same spacing of the scale. Of course, it changes when you, when you go minor. hear it in my ear what it would sound like but that gives you uh, as I instruct the more you practice your basic scales and then you add the not just the minor but the but the harmonic minor scale you will hear those same chords being used in songs and as you listen to listen to chords how they are placed within the context of a song as you can see my one stays the same but look at how many chords I can put in the one And you listen to the different artists that 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 create music be it a hymn uh, be it a an urban gospel song be it a classical played song what is it minor major minor playing by ear because I never turned I was never taught by a pianist player I know it's going to go to a C major, G, A minor, E major, because I know where it's going to go. Now I can improvise. Straight seven. I can now improvise based on just practicing the the basic scales 
Uh, number one is developing the technique of touch, playing soft, playing hard, playing at speed, being able to use all the fingers. I saw a guy demonstrating this on a video, and I was doing that back in my younger days, practicing like this, just to build up speed on my hands and dexterity to be able to jump to any note I want to. Or I did take drumming when I was a youngster, but I, didn't, I couldn't hear the notes I wanted to hear. I'd rather do chords. And you can find some of the popular songs of this era, which for church-wise, they're using the, the, the one, and they're going to the six, they're going to the four, they're going to the five, and then they're going back to the one. You can use these same concepts to build chords to help you, what I call transportation, from the one, three, six, three, four, two, five, seven with a five chord, one. In my head, I don't count numbers. In my head, I count chord placements. Where's, where's my highest note? Where's my lowest note? And what, what notes do I have available to me in between? Because I could go different ways. I can go here. three or I can go to the six with a major but I have to be able to know that when I when I get to the sixth note of that scale what is the designated chord from the number system and then what other chords can I go from there do I stay minor do I go major do I throw a seventh in there do I throw a diminish in there if I want to because I know what it's going to sound like before I play it let me see if I can show you. Highest note, the F sharp. Minor, B flat, A flat, G, A, B flat, E flat. I should be doing this. E, C sharp. G, C. Again, I can hear the chords before I play it, so that if I make a mistake, I can look back and see what I did wrong. I don't want to go to four. F7, major seven. That's an F7 there when a major seven and an inversion of it, diminished chord. And end with a version of a C7. C major nine. Because I'm, I'm stretching out to here and throwing in that note. If I take that note off of the major seven, but because I want that tone. When you, uh, when you investigate the different styles that make up gospel music, you will find that they do borrow chords from the jazz world because some of those musicians, in my opinion, uh, morphed into playing when the songs were now be becoming more popular. They began to, I'll say, contract the more skilled and the theory-based musicians so they can now throw these chords in to gospel songs. Now, will you hear it a lot in a lot of the gospel songs? No, you'll hear elements of it. When you get the... the seven on a um, six. seventh right of d9 but the seventh in there
there it is when I when I omit notes it changes the name I know what I'm playing but when I when I uh, stretch out or when I omit the notes I'm playing I can better talk to it but I'll throw this chord in there because this melody at the top let's see can I give you a song that uh, you might know um, I'm thinking of the song Good Times from the television series. Let me see if I how it goes. I know that I know the second part. about as much as, as I can show without going back and listen to it. Uh, but those chords are of a jazz nature. But when they become uh, commercialized, that's the word I want to use, when they become commercialized, then you bring in your studio musicians, and they don't sit studio musicians in a church. They sit them before sheet music and jazz. Um, it's, like a, it's like a chart that says we're doing a, a C7 here. We're doing a minor six here. We're doing a minish. We're doing a diminished chord here. We're finishing off with this chord here. And we're finishing off with this chord here. Based upon where the melody is going to go. That is the concept that I use because as a young musician in a high school, I was a instrumentalist. So I did not learn chords. I learned my part in a chord. Wherever my part was, usually in the middle. So I can, I can center myself around where those chords would be and where the higher notes melody would be in a jazz, in a jazz a setting under theory. That's what I'm hearing. I go all the chords around this note. I can change key and go These are all the notes that we've been covering so far As long as I know where the note is I can now center chords around it G I'm putting around this note a major chord a diminished chord or augmented chord right because we did cover that there's my minor chord my augmented chord and my major chord but here's my anchoring note and that's my anchoring key now when I'm building chords uh, from a practice standpoint I always try to have a pattern that I want where I wanted to go. You saw me patting it, patting it right there from the I'm staying D from the five to the one to the four to the flat seventh. Now I'm just talking in the jazz terms because I'm working on that, becoming more familiar with those terms. Back to the one, but now I can go to the three to the six to five. Flat seven, plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, flat it, and go over, take it right up. That's chord building, where you once you've learned what a chord is, how a chord is constructed, how many chords are built around a scale, which scales, major or minor, which is what what which is what I instruct in gospel music. And then what, uh, what, how have you heard those melodies, excuse me, scales, major and minor, chords, major and minor, the, uh, the offshoots from those chords, those are the sevenths, the sixes, 
the augmentative, uh, what did I leave out, the diminished chords, how have you heard them used in not just gospel music, but in all music? And then now, as you can see, there is a menu of chords that you can pick from when you're playing a song. And if you get stuck on a particular chord and you've got a menu to work from, you always want to build a chord from this, from its, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? I always get caught when I try to get it out at one time. What is the most common note to a chord you want to hear? I can pick F sharp, G flat. Well, what chord do I want to hear from this? Well, it could be I could hear a D chord, I'm sorry, a D major chord, a D minor chord, a B flat chord, a G flat chord, a E flat minor chord from just this note, um, a seventh chord, there we go, a minor chord, there we go, that's what I played earlier, but with a, a minor six in it, but that note is still there. Look at all these chords built around this note. Uh, and if I go lower, this is what I would practice. This being the center note. This is something you can practice also just as an idea to be able to work on building your chords. So if I stay in G flat F sharp, what we give this F sharp? Right. D five. One, two, three, four, five. One. The four. And uh, we're gonna flat. The six, or we can call it a seven, because I'm using both notes to get that tone. And now I can expand on that. Go higher. Messed up a note. higher this is if you got this reach because now it's now it's repeating following the scale down that is a concept that uh, putting, learning all of these chords made it easier for me to, to grasp because I heard someone else use it depending upon what the song was, the, depending upon the, what error it was. And then I began to look at, well, what other chords can I mix and match around that? A lot of musicians don't like to play in G, which I'm finding out I can't understand it. The best way I can say you learn to play in G, if you can play in C, you can play in G, the same fingering except for one note. That's the only difference. That fingering, that's the only difference. It's the same fingering. So whatever you can do in C, go to G and don't think about being in G, think about being in C. It's the same fingering. G becomes a very familiar key when you understand you only have one note difference. Same fingering. So now your, your muscles, or your, you don't have to train your hands to do anything different except when you're in G, play the F sharp because that is a part of its major scale. And when you hear that different, when you hear, you go there, you know, okay, I'm no, I know I'm not in G, but I should be a half a step away. Only one note difference. And a lot of the keys that you are unfamiliar playing with, like the key of A major, if you look at how many notes there are that are out of the ordinary, this the uh, C sharp, the F sharp, the G major, and there. So these are the only, these notes are out of the way. So you look for a scale, that uses these same notes, and I believe that was E major. There we go. Same fingering, and they use some of the, they use some of the same notes. 
So if you can play an A major, E major becomes easier for you. Because just like you do this here in A major, same fingering here. same fingering just a different tone so when you're playing in the in any key you are training your hands and your muscle memory to play in multiple keys which makes it easier for when you want to just go into say go a major and sound like your flare uh, as they say um what's the word that you, tech, you, you guys are using now really doing your thing in a major I'm in C major. Now I'm back in E major and I'm going to resolve back into A. I'll give you that what I just did. Indeed. Now you're going to the key of C. Now you're in the D. Go down. Resolve. And go back to the A major. And give a little trill. It is that easy. When you get, as the Bible says, an understanding. Sam Tober Sound of Joy Music Services. I hope I've shared something to help broaden your understanding of how to build your own chord library. I've been building chords since I first got an understanding of what notes sound like on a piano so I can easily go to any key and pull off anything musically I want. As always, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Um, we're going to be asking soon in one of the posts how many would like to be a part of our Zoom program where we want to be able to take musicians which in the same time zone and, a, and a, an actual specified time where they could come online and have at least five to ten musicians learning these concepts. I think I'm going to keep it away from learning songs. I'll keep that to my Patreon page. But to be able to train musicians in this sort of concept, building chords and uh, creating your own chord library. It would be very inexpensive. I'm already looking at doing it by the minute so that you're not putting out a lot of funds. It may won't run any longer than 20 minutes to 25 minutes because once you get the concept down, then you don't need it anymore. You can go on to whatever you want, want to learn next. So as always, Sam Tober, Sound of Joy Music Service, give us that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, how come? We've been out here since 2006. I believe we have close to 34,500 subscribers now. Other sites that are into the hundreds. So uh, share this, these videos with your musician friends in your area. And of course, leave a comment. Take care now and see you on the next. It's not a viewer request, but chord building. Take care.